Hey guys, this is HDGW2, my name is Rapsack. And my name is Oriel. And today we're coming back with another edition of our Science of SPVP, this time with Sempadius. And we have got Nicaro the Swift from Sempadius here. How are you doing, Nicaro? I'm doing alright. Alright, that's awesome. So let's get in uh, into the team lineup. So if you want to just outline the uh, classes and the roles that they'll be playing in this match. Uh, sure. Um, Guy Kimir is playing um, a tanky warrior based on uh, shouts mostly, and he will be uh, our uh, defensive support, usually on the midpoint at first. Um, Hale is our uh, engineer. He has a pretty strong 1v1 condition uh, build, and he's also going for the mid uh, from the start. Um, mm -hmm. Sundas is our uh, roamer and uh, trap defender, and um, right. his build is also pretty strong as a duelist. Um, I'm playing the Venom Share build, and uh, I go for the enemy trebuchet in the beginning, and after that I roam as well. Uh, Conrad is our uh, designated trebuchet guy for this po for this match, and uh, he pretty much stayed there all the time and did a really good job. Right, I see. So um, y I guess your role is going to be pushing for that far trebuchet, the, the enemy one, and sort of attacking that. You being sort of spec for 1v1, um, you'll be able to also take out the trebuchet pretty well. So I guess Conrad is going to be um, defending your trebuchet while you're also, uh, sorry, manning your trebuchet while you have you have your sort of elementalist sort of defending your backline. Is is that sort of your general strategy with these mm -hmm. characters? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, those are our initial strategies, but stuff usually changes a lot during the game. Right. I see. I see. All right. Well. So uh, just uh yeah just just really quickly. So your your initial strategy going to this game. I mean. Of course, like you said before, you do a lot of reactionary play and it's it's all about sort of, you know, um, basing your strategy on the fly and sort of working out what's going to work for you best. What's your sort of initial sort of dead out strategy, what you're going through uh, when you start the game straight off? Um, our initial plan is um, to, well, we always man our trebuchet at the beginning because it's a really strong tool to have and it really turns battles around, especially if you have a numerical disadvantage. We also mm -hmm. go for their trap for exactly the same reason because we know it's, it's really strong and we don't want them to, to use it at all. Um, and then uh, besides those two, um, those two sides, we like to play it safe. So we send two guys mid and then ano another to our uh, closest point and uh, leave their closest point to be capped afterwards. Oh, All right. right. So, so like um, two yeah, two to the windmill, two to the clock tower, one to the trebuchet as sort of the opening. Right. So uh, I guess we'll no, see this uh, player. One windmill, uh, one windmill, one their trebuchet, one our trebuchet, and two mid. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, let's get into it, and uh, yeah, let's get into the game. All right. So we have got the perspective of the engineer here, and like you said, he's going to be heading to the midpoint. That right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. All right, and uh, so he's, he's using, you know, engineers, like we've seen in the past, very great at defending a point. I guess it's not so key to have someone standing on your windmill, your first point old game, just to defend that. So it's more of, I guess, defending the midpoint, and uh, that's why you want to use an engineer. Is that right? Um, yeah, I mean, he he has a pretty strong uh, 1v1 build, and he's also being back, backed up by uh, Guy Kimir. Um, yeah. Our, our builds are very team-based, so... If we're working together, we usually have a, an advantage over individual very bursty builds or something. Mm, and we can see the, the um, engineer knocking out those windows straight away when he gets up to the clock tower. So what's the idea behind doing something like that? Well, um, if you break the windows, then you have clear sight, just, just like now, to the windmill oh. and on this side to the mansion. Yeah, so so you, can, you, you can tell um, if there are uh, any enemies there, if they're headed there, and that just helps on keeping a head count on where the enemy is, so everyone can just move freely and a bit more co uh, co confidently. Like I said, we, we, uh, um, we usually react to the, team and, uh, to the uh, enemy team and, and what they're doing. All right, so we can see a fair bit of damage coming down here. I can see yourself down there uh, mm -hmm. fighting on the point, and you just gained stability from that uh, elixir from the el yeah, engineer. Yeah, exactly. Great play. While, uh, while actually stealth stopping, so that was a pretty safe stomp. Yeah, I pretty <laughs> not bad there. And I guess that supply crate also doing a lot of damage. Those turrets are helping out a fair bit. Yeah. So um, that's some, some pretty good positioning there. I guess that's something, like you said, you like to you know use a lot of uh, team play and and really try and stay communicative and you know keep tabs on your opponent. I guess that's sort of the benefit of it we're seeing right here. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, um, a, um, a team that's um, not as skilled 
as uh, as another team th they can they can they can win as long as they have really good communication and and if the other one doesn't because y you can usually ach achieve uh, superior numbers just by timing by timing everything right and I really see. moving well uh, uh, so th the team moving as a, as as a whole unit instead of individual players so if someone is on the far side of the map and and he's the, like the designated roamer then there's no point in having him actually run there because it'll take more time so usually someone from mid just goes and then um the roamer will just fill his spot that's why uh, i said it's the initial strategy but everything usually changes as the game goes and we usually um just adapt to what's going on i see and when it, when it comes to that team communication and team play using something like combo fields becomes very important knowing when uh your teammate is going to use something like that can make or break uh, sort of like a team fight i guess yeah exactly definitely um i i, I really think that team builds are the way to go for a uh, tournament uh, PvP because, well, most of the time you're fighting a as a team, as a two on a two v two, uh, mostly or three v threes on initial mid fights on or something like that. And uh, having combo fields or builds that support your team will just make everyone stronger, everyone survive more. And that's really the thing: it's who can survive the longest. Because if you down one of them, then, well, it's you're al you you're already at a, at a, an advantage and so if you have a, a really bursty build that's really good for dueling or 1v1ing or something um well it's usually going to lose to uh to builds that actually support the whole team i really like how you said back there you know it's great to utilize all your players you know if you've got your engineer on point standing around doing nothing then you you know you're better off kind of taking him away from the fight and i guess it's it's shown in the score because you had a triple cap there for some time and that's really sort of putting you up ahead. Mm -hmm. I guess, do, would you ever find that, you know, this very, uh, you know, dynamic style would be disadvantageous in any situation where a really conservative style might excel? Well, um, it, um, it depends. I mean, so far, this, uh, this way of playing has been uh, working very well for us because um, I, I really disagree with having someone, um, I mean, more than one person on a point all the time, and even sometimes uh, having a person on the point at all because it it really is a, n a numbers game so if you know where everyone is you can move freely without actually worrying about an imminent threat and you'll have s in uh, in the long run you'll actually have superior uh, no uh, numbering just by timing they don't need to be there the whole fight they just need to do enough to l to have the the guys there finish the fight and then go back to his point or go help somewhere else and we switch around roles a lot that's really great i mean uh, favoring that sort of team communications is kind of like uh Playing other games where, like you know, using process of elimination, you can you can know where your teammates are or your enemies are, and and that way, you know, you can work around that. I guess the downside of that would be would be if you you know if your communication was not on top of it, then you could actually run into some tricky situations. But this uh, trebuchet doing a lot of damage there. I, yeah, I, we can see two people just killed there yeah. by the trebuchet. So um, utilizing that trebuchet with the uh, the ranger really is benefiting your team at the moment. We can't see the enemy team. Um, jumping on the trebuchet at all? Yeah, um, I, uh, to be honest, I think that's what made the the score so different because uh, the trebuchet does so much damage. I mean, you, you, it, for example, if you have the trebuchet and they're not using it, if you have a if you have a one v two situation, um, you can pretty much win it as long as you keep kiting them long enough for the trebuchet to actually hit them, because it's so strong, yeah. or they'll be thrown down, and then you have an advantage to do what you want with them, pretty much. So uh, right. the trebuchet is a really strong tool, and you should you should really use it and destroy the enemy. And that would sort of reflect in your that's that's just sort of reflecting in your composition where you've got you know an engineer and a warrior, sort of two tanky ones up on the point. So their idea is to kind of kite it while you can use the the trebuchet for the damage essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can see uh, there must have been a call for the trebuchet. I'm guessing because both of you now are running over to the trebuchet. So yourself and the engineer here. Mm -hmm. And he actually threw the. Um, the enemy instead of just killing him or trying to kill him or something he threw he threw him off the trebuchet and let me took care of the trebuchet because i have the thieves guild and enough damage to take care of it and at this point it's just really keeping them busy not letting them go for our points and just trying to uh, intercept them all right that's interesting you touched on that there we've heard a lot of teams have you know uh in the past when they when they're at this sort of critical mass of points where they know that they they can just taste victory around the corner Mm -hmm. um, is it something that you, you'd like to employ where, you know, you go for a, a very cheesy strategy where you, you might have five people on one point just to secure the win? Or is that something you'd, you'd sort of uh, advise against? Uh, no, no. I, uh, 
I mean, I wouldn't do it just simply because it really is cheesy and it's not really playing the game. And uh, on an esports sense, it's not really exciting. It's pretty boring to watch. Um, oh, that's a good point. I mean, uh, if we're winning or if we if we have two caps, what we usually like to do is, let's say we just won uh, a mid fight or something, so th they still have to respawn. There's no point in just being on the point, waiting them f uh, for them to get there and possibly winning the, the, the fight. We usually take one or maybe two uh, players and uh, get them close to their base, so as soon as re they respawn, uh, the point isn't really to kill them, it's just to drag them around and try to make them waste their time because the clock's still ticking, so we keep getting points mm -hmm. and they don't, so uh, if you're winning and you have two caps, wasting their time is a really good thing, and if you time your deaths um, correctly, you can actually respawn and get back to the point before the enemy gets there if they kill you uh, next to their base. Yes, that's a good point. So there is that uh, respawn timer in play. So if you're killed at a certain um, time, it's beneficial to stay alive until some other time to be killed. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, cl yeah. the clocks as of right now, I think, is um, so 0, 40 and 20. So let's say you get, uh, you, you get killed at uh, 45 seconds. That means you'll only have a 5 second respawn. If you have um, a 39, uh, if, if you're if you killed at 39 seconds, then mm -hmm. you, you have to wait till it's 20 to actually respawn. So y you can play a around with that uh, both defensively and offensively. So because you can you can respawn quicker, and also instead of just stomping the enemy as soon uh, as soon as you can, if you look at the timer and you see that it's really close to respawn, you can just try to CC anyone trying to uh, revive them or just uh, take your time. And then after the, that uh, respawn uh, clock resets, just stomp him and you'll have 19, 18 or 17 seconds of respawn and th that time is really precious. That's really interesting. I mean, that's uh, definitely something you'd want to look at if you really wanted to get a bit more out of your game. Is that something you guys are already doing? I mean, I guess it's pretty, pretty uh, tough to sort of make those decisions, but I guess is that something you want to jump on as early as possible? Oh, yeah. yeah, enemy team, please kill me when the respawn timer is low. You can't really <laughs> say something like that. No, so. but, uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, the, but y y for example, a a as a thief, I can teleport, I can cloak, so I can kind of Definitely. try to time it in, in a way that yeah, they'll yeah. kill me. So, uh, I mean, if, if, if the timing is wrong, I'll just try to run as much as I can or try to CC them and stuff. But uh, if it's close to the if it's close to respawn then i'll just sit there and hope they'll kill me i mean of course I if this is only done if you're I if you're uh, if you're alone and you don't have any teammate to actually try to uh, revive you of course because getting revived on the spot is al always better yeah time time is really precious time is really precious um and i was just going to just uh, something that i thought uh, of is that uh you know i guess we see a lot of ma matches on forest and there's a lot more about that sort of very conservative, uh, you know, capturing a point, staying on a point, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was just wondering about, you know, uh, with this whole, the whole sort of uh, on Kylo, you know, you, you're using that trebuchet and you, you, you assign sort of roles like yourself playing the thief to attack that trebuchet. Do you find your strategies vary a lot between, you know, playing on Kylo and playing on Niffle or do you really like to keep those same sort of core sort of strengths where you, where you use really great communication to sort of make, win the matches? Well, um you can only really plan so far and and, and uh, i think I in this game you can you can barely plan that much i mean y you can plan your opening so uh, you go there you go there and all that stuff but if the enemy team does something that completely counters your strategy y you do have to react to it y y you can't just stick to your strat your strategy if it's not going to work so uh, yeah. I, I mean w and with that would that vary with the builds as well? I mean, do you, do you run the same sort of builds that you would on uh, Forest? Um, w we might uh, make some changes uh, that'll help us snipe uh, NPCs, but uh, in general, we try we try to run builds that benefit the whole team and not just uh, um, individual builds because you're always in team fights. So combo mm -hmm. fields, traits that help your team, and all that stuff will just make everyone stronger and will basically win. If the enemy team has si simple, uh, like they, they might have really good duelist uh, builds, but uh, I mean, uh, when everyone gets a lot better at playing and stuff, uh, you'll be able to avoid that. And as soon as that burst is gone, the power of the en uh, of the team that has all of the buffs will eventually win. I see. Yeah, I guess that is an uh, important factor to take into consideration when playing Kylo or Nifl. 
Um, one last point that we have to bring up yeah. um, is the down mechanic. So, uh, <laughs> what are your opinions on the down mechan- or the down state at the moment? You know, um, I do like the down the, the down state because it completely Not changes cool. the the focus of the um, of the fight. Uh, because um, otherwise, I- if you didn't have um, th- the down state, it would be pretty boring to watch. I mean, it might be, it might, it might suck for the players. Oh, now we have to down that. But uh, yeah, we d- we all want uh, Guild Wars to possibly be an esport, and th- the down state is an exciting mechanic. And even for the people playing, it, sometimes it's very unpredictable. Um, I mean, uh, right. if you're fighting and someone gets down, the whole focus of the battle changes into reviving and stomping. That's why you save your CCs. And all that stuff, or skills like Shadow Refuge that I use a lot a- as a roamer, and it helps get my uh, my teammates up. It, it just makes it a lot more interesting to watch, at least. But um, the thing I, d- I I disagree with is uh, the way Rally works. Um, as far as as I can tell right now, as long as you do enough damage to to someone to get the points for the kill, you can be rallied by them. So let's say you're fighting uh, someone on mid, and then for some reason, you you two split. One goes mansion, one goes uh, windmill, and uh, if, um, if 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 the other guy gets uh, downed, he can actually get rallied from the other side of the map, or or by someone else, as long as you've done enough damage to actually get the points for it. So, uh, I guess yeah. my suggestion We've would be that. just have the rally to only one, the the one you've done the most damage to. Right, yeah. I mean, we've seen that in, in other games where, you know, you can get the, the stomp rally where you can just attack an enemy and, and if they get stomped, then, you know, you can get put up too. So, uh, there you have it, guys. A bit a bit of love for the down state, you know? Definitely, yeah. So, it's a 1-1, one, one, I guess, for the down state at the moment. It's so. good to have a, a bit of a different perspective on there. But um, I think we might wrap this one up here. So, uh, you know, as, as always, leave us a bit of a comments uh, down on down on the YouTube there and, you know, let us know how you thought about this video and, and how you thought it went. And um, besides that, you know, make sure to check us out. And as always, stay tuned.